Welcome to episode four, as Tom tells us. Tonight's guest, Mr. Ralph Masit, longtime business owner and resident of Wallingford. He's got an interesting story to tell you about, so let's listen to what's, how it all got started with the Masit family. Welcome again, Ralph. Thank you, Tom, for having me. Could you uh, go over like when your father came here? Sure. Uh, well, my father was from Calabria, Italy, and uh, he came over in the late 40s when he was like 16, 17 years old with that dream of, you know, making it in America. His father was here first and came to Connecticut and worked at a factory. So my dad came over to New York with a suitcase, you know, a couple bucks, and um, liked New York, so he stayed there. Um, he knew someone about cooking back in Italy because it was a very small town and started working at some restaurants and eventually he worked at a famous restaurant called Mama Leone's in New York. Um, and that's where he got a lot of his start over there. Uh, his father asked him to come to Connecticut uh, to help work in the factory that he was working in. And my father was more used to working with his hands. He helped him a little bit, but then he goes, you know, I want to open my own place. So he got a couple of bucks, had a little oven, a couple of tables, opened up a pizza shop in Meriden, in the heart of Italy, which is between Springdale Avenue and Windsor Avenue. Um, and that started his entire career. Um, going very well, people kept coming in, they wanted a beer with pizza. Now, this, now we're talking the late 40s. And he couldn't serve alcohol because it was near a church. So some told, told, told him come to Wallingford. So he decided to look in Wallingford and saw this garage for rent. A garage. A garage, yeah, a garage for rent. Uh, right on Route 5, um, it's, it's currently Ola's restaurant. So he looked at it, and on a handshake, wow. he said, okay, we'll see what we can do, and uh, converted everything to a restaurant. And I think that's why there's a restaurant there today. So he served full license, full beer, liquor, he served dinners, and back then you had all international silver, you had all kinds of corporations, so everything just started booming up. And that probably took him, between the time he came over to the time he opened that restaurant, was right around six years. So he went really quick. Um, was he married at that time? He had met my mom at the pizza restaurant in Meriden. <laughs> Uh, one of her friends said, hey, you've got to come see this cute Italian guy. Yeah. So he walked in, they looked, and... Wow, at first <laughs> glance? And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, I started going on a couple of dates, and, you know, they had a lot in common because her, her family, my mom's family is from Italy, so they had a real lot in common. Now, he spoke English? A little bit when he first came over, very, very little. But he learned as you go. It's like most, most people come over from different countries. You kind of learn as you go. But um, he, he quickly be also became a citizen here, as fast as he could, so he had dual citizenship. And uh, um, he, uh, again, once he had the Capri restaurant, it was called the Capri, because my, mo my mom's favorite place in the world is Capri in Italy, which is- That's the name of a town or a restaurant? It's, a, it's an island oh. off of Naples. Okay. It's called Capri. And my mom never was there, but she always loved the pictures. So fast forward a little bit, 52-ish, give or take. About 1958, he was outgrowing where he was. So where the Villa Capri was, and while I on Route 5, uh, there was a piece of property. And again, he talked to the guy on a handshake. Again. Again. I want to expand. He wanted to do parties. He wanted to do weddings. How he got that information, how he got the idea, to this day, we don't know. And he's more self-learned, self-taught kind of guy. Took a lot, a lot of chances. So when he did that, um, he, he did the Villa Capri at the time, opened in 1960. There was, uh, I had with my brother, myself, and my sister at the time. And he just moved into a, a, another home. Now, was it as big as it ended up being right oh, in the beginning? In the beginning, yeah. It, as, as the years went on, we added on and added on and added on. But the place at that time probably sat five, six hundred people at the time between parties and dinners. But back then it was different. With the 60s was very good. You had the Oakdale Theater in town. Movie stars came in. And my dad was working all the time. He didn't know one movie star from another. So they would come in. Hey, how you doing, George? Uh, they sit down with him. They had no clue who these guys were. So, um, and he grew from there. So how we got into it is 
we just grew into the business. We started family there, business. Family business. And he goes, you want to come help me for a little while? Yeah, I had 11, 12 years old. You go in the kitchen, wow, you that's cool. do some dishes, and, and we were totally hands-on. <clears throat> so our whole family just totally got involved with it. I remember your dad, he was really a down-to-earth guy, and yeah. I, I'd see him at the Home Depot, hey, Tommy, how you doing? <laughs> That's my dad. He, he, he was he, great. He, he never, was great. never forgot his roots. He was never like that. He was always uh, always for the people. He actually brought a lot of uh, relatives over from Italy to help him get jobs here eventually. Some worked for him, some moved to Florida, California, things like that. Did you tell me that he created a couple of cooks uh, or chefs yes. or gave him a chance? Yeah, he did. Our, actually, one of our main chefs uh, from Italy at the time uh, came over and my father gave him a job and didn't know where he was going to go. He ended up staying with us for a lot of years. And there was other guys in there that came in. Uh, one of his cousins opened up uh, a couple of restaurants up one in Connecticut and eventually down in Florida and of course he's retired so I my, that's the way my father was he really believed in giving every you know everybody a chance to do something because because he got a shot you know and uh, and that, that that's how he did it today so uh, I know I left a lot out but it's it's how my father did it now after you and I went to high school <laughs> and you went to college yeah. you thought you were gonna do something else but I, he said I I was planning on going training for the Olympics for judo, which me and Tom were in judo, long time, and uh, he wanted to renovate. And he goes, hey, you want to help me out for a little while? Which was? Which was in 1976, <laughs> and uh, I was still helping. <laughs> Here I am. So, but it, you know, in, in any business, you hear rumors like, it, you got the bug, it's in your blood, and it is. You know, the restaurant business, you gotta like it, or you gotta hate it. It's one of the two, and we actually loved it. And it's something we stepped into, and we worked really hard at it. And and my dad really created something extremely special for all the family. That restaurant was a Wallingford landmark. Yeah. Thank you for the longest time. Long, long time. Yeah, long time. It was there from 1960 until 2016. We decided to get out of that part of the business, but in the middle of that, we also owned the Yankee Silver Smith Inn. Uh, we purchased, that's another thing my father did, is um, back then, I think it was 91, they were having issues. I, the IRS the closed original them, whatever, owner, yes. the original owner. Great restaurant, great reputation, busy all the time, food was good. My father always loved that restaurant because it stood for America. It was the, uh, you know, it was like American dream to have these things. So um, one day, it was a Wednesday, middle of the summer, the... Um, staff from the Yankee Silversmith started coming in. I said, what's going on? He goes, oh, we just closed. I said, what do you mean? He says, the government came in, closed them up. And so we go, really? So we looked at jobs. So that night, my dad comes in and we're talking. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, with his accent. You know, the Yankee Silversmith closed. <laughs> so uh, what do you think we go when we buy it? I says, okay, you know, well, what do you want to do? He goes, we got to talk. He goes, hold on takes a piece of paper out, and he already signed the deal. Right then and there. So we looked into it, so he, about a year and a half it took us to rebuild it, to make it bigger, we enlarged it, we kept the train car, we kept the same idea with the popovers, and so on and so forth. Um, and then unfortunately in 2007, uh, there was a fire, and the water sprinklers all went off and literally destroyed the whole inside of the restaurant. It's not necessarily the, the fire that had it, but it was all the water damage. It could not be rebuilt. Then we took the train car and, and donated it to the Eastern Railroad Museum out in Willimantic because uh, they had a sister uh, car just like that, and it's still there today. And they were looking for people to renovate it, but then they didn't have the money to do it, so it still. How did they there. move it down? That was it. That was. Pretty hard. They hired a company that had a special, actually in town, uh, the name escapes me, um, came in, they hired them and brought and transported all down. They had police escorts on the highway because it was such a big car. And um, people were on bridges yelling wow. and screaming. Yeah, I, I forgot that. Yeah, I hit the news and it was everywhere. But I was so happy that it went 
to a place that can hopefully eventually preserve this car because it, it, it really meant a lot. Is it down there now? It's down there now. Yeah, it's inside <clears> the building <throat> right now under cover. And people can walk through it? I don't know. I think they can. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure people go down there, they can at least look at it because it's still intact. It's still beautiful. It's still the way it was. Okay. <clears throat> Was it your dad's intention before he died to get out of the normal restaurant business and go into fast food, or was it no? The, the, no. What guys? happened is interesting is because we own Sonic of Connecticut now. We have three three units. So he passed in two thousand and seven. About the fire, fire was in June, and he had some issues, and he passed in October of two thousand and seven. Um, so we were we had this building that had to come down. So we were saying, what are we going to do with the land? And we kept hearing these Sonic commercials, Sonic commercials, and there was none. So we called Sonic headquarters, and this uh, they said it's available coming November. So get on the phone in November. Actually, my brother called them and said, oh, you're the first one in line. So we flew out to Oklahoma City. They loved us. We loved them. And we said, you know, it'll be a good fit for Connecticut because there's nothing in Connecticut. So that's how we got the first Sonic, and we put it on the property uh, on the other side where the Yankee, where the Yankee was. But and, uh, now you own two others? We have three. We have this one, <clears throat> Wallingford, Manchester, and Milford. We have all three. So it's my brother, uh, Robert, and my sister, Gina, and myself that we're all, all involved with that. We have a great crew. They do a great job. But you're not there yet because Robert owns... Oh, he also owns Pancheros, my That's brother, right. Robert, uh, which is right in Wallingford. We've been in Wallingford since... 50, let's see, my father, 50, 1950, 51. Our business has only been in Wallingford. Uh, so we've been here for a very long time, 60 something years. My father believed in Wallingford his whole life. It was a great town to be in. Meriden was, was wonderful. I mean, I grew up in Meriden my whole life. I've been here 10, 12 years. Uh, I, I did everything in town here except sleep. Finally, I moved here, which I love. Uh, and uh, it, it's just a great town. So Sonic's a lot different than Pancheros. Totally different, yes. Pancheros is your uh, Mexican. They make uh, fresh uh, tortillas that are cooked right there. Fresh ground, fresh beef, fresh chicken. It's, it's, it's an incredible concept. Very, it's extremely fresh. There's not a lot of them, but um, they're growing pretty strong. Where Sonic, in the other word, hands, we have your hot dogs, your burgers, your shakes, and so on. And of course, the big thing is the roller skate. The girls come yeah. out of the roller skates. Even in the winter? The winter, as long as the pavement is dry, wow. we they they want to come out. It's 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 just an incredible thing, and it's it's just a lot of fun. Now I noticed Panchero, no drive through. No drive through. I don't know if others are having them in the country. Oh, okay. I don't I don't know. But where he is is a great spot, and he wanted he wanted to stay in Wallingford, because again again that's that's kind of and he can look good. across the street where the. The at a gas station now. Yeah, with a Villa Capri, it's a couple of farms now, which is which is fine. It just added something to the town, and I think that's what the town really could have used then at that time. I have a curious question for you. Mm -hmm. you Robert and your sister and you, you guys all have children. Are any Correct. of them going to follow in, in the restaurant business that you know? Well, of? they, my kids grew up in the business with me. My sister's two kids were in the business also for a while. Um, they thought they had to come into the business and they liked it and I didn't really convince them not to but I they knew the hours that I put in you know six seven days a week you know 15 16 hours a day um, and then one day when they were seventh eighth grade they asked me that they wanted to go to school for this and I said why do you want to do that he says well your father did it and you did it well wow. and I says you don't have to do it and they went <laughs> and what they could have came in so right I mean they were had different they all have different careers now but they would step in at any time if they want we told the doors open if you want to come into it you could definitely come in but I mean when they were growing in high school and, and junior high school they all helped Robert has his kids are a little younger so they didn't experience that just yet uh, one just graduated high school the other one's still in high school so they were a lot younger at the time and your mom's still doing okay? Doing awesome. Well, you know my mom. She asks about you a lot. <laughs> yeah, she's, I was just there all day with her today. Yeah, she, she's great. doing real well. Real well, thanks. She worked in the business a real lot. What other... You know, I know you for a, a businessman. Mm -hmm. You talk a lot about... And you've helped me a lot in, in things in my life. And 
What did you get from your father that drives you, that keeps you going? Just what you said, a drive. Yeah. You know, keep going, take chances. You know, they're, they're, whatever you put in, you're going to get out. And if you don't put it in, you're not going to get out. Every dollar you spend, you'll never get it back. So it's it's just one of these things. You you, you just push forward and keep going. You don't you don't let if you fall down like people say. You yeah, get up. It doesn't matter. You just keep driving. If you if you if you think oh I can't do this I can't you're not going to be successful. It's not not going to happen. But even in the in, even at the Villa Capri days, we weren't the type of people to sit in an office. You know, we're out there on the floor with everybody. If we're we go in the kitchen, we'll help. You know, put out the dinners. We'll help clear. You know, whatever we need to do to get the job done. That's what our, our family does. And same thing. I mean, at Sonic is a little different because you've got a different staff. But you know, if we're there, we take care of whatever needs to be done, with customers and so on and so forth. But it's it's totally it's very custom. My father always said it's customers, customers, customers are first. They were the first ones to take care of, then our staff. And then us. That, that's basically his principle. Do you have any restaurant funny stories you can tell us? Something goofy that happened? Funny strange stories. Oh God, I don't know. Um, a lot of years ago, like I said, my father in this probably in the '60s, movie stars used to come in from Oakdale. So one day, Tony Bennett comes in. Everyone knows, should know Tony Bennett. They came in every now and then, hey George, how you doing? They sit down, they have some meals together, blah, blah. So there was a ladies auxiliary group having a party. So my father goes, hey Tony, I heard you had a song out there. <laughs> Something San Francisco, I don't know. He goes, oh, you left my heart in San Francisco? Yeah, that's it. Can you sing it? Yeah, sure. Wow. So he, so he, you know, my father opens the doors and he walks in these ladies and here comes Tony Bennett. You know, singing, I left my heart in San Francisco, and the women went ballistic, totally ballistic. And they sat down with the ladies, they took pictures or whatever, and they went back upstairs. You know, it's just kind of a, that's my dad, yeah. you know, it's kind of, kind, of, kind of a fun thing. Now, you guys had some tremendous weddings there. Oh, God, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. I talk to people, oh, yeah, everybody misses it. Yeah. Well, well, we've done generations of weddings. I mean, people that got married in the 60s, we do their kids. And I, I can't tell you how many of those we have done. And, and the sad part is, I remember in the 70s, planning these people's weddings, and then I'm planning the kids' weddings. And my father planned the grandparents' wedding. So it's, 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 it's very interesting how the traditions, they all, all stayed in there. Weddings was, was, was a huge part of the business, and it was fun. It was, the, the, the fun part was seeing them take, you know, it's a huge day for them, and being part of that day was absolutely tremendous for us. And you know, again, I still see people like you just said, they say, hey, you did my wedding. I, yeah, I didn't know how many I did. I must hey, have, you still married? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I mean, I must have done a few thousand weddings myself oh. in my day, you know, running them, planning them, and so on and so forth. It, it's still a great business. So I understand you're involved in the Hubcap here in town? Oh yeah, Hubcap, what very you, big. How do you, what do the you do hub, there? The Hubcap um, is involved with education in a town. We're right downtown on, on Center Street. They've been there five years. Um, uh, great board we have. Uh, we do stuff with all the schools. We have education um, uh, seminars going on all the time. Um, uh, we, we are um, in the, uh, doing also startup companies in there. We've had some startup groups that come in where you teach them the business. Uh, we had one, one girl that did some app and her business, I think, went for like $2 million afterwards. In town? In, yeah, in, in town. There's a, a graphic shirt shop in town uh, that started there, um, and they have an extremely good business right now. So it, it's, it's a very community-oriented uh, thing, and, it's, it's in the, and w with, the, with the school system we work with, it's, it's phenomenal. Then they do like pop-up restaurants with the with the Lyman Hall food service. Oh, the they truck. do that yeah, yeah. with the trucks and everything. I mean, they have the art show that I think I think it's still going on. I'm not sure. Uh, I was there last week, and the art that these kids did, juniors and seniors and sophomores from high school, it unbelievable. So it's it's something in this town I think really needed. One last thing. Go ahead. You told me about the green stripes in the town. 
Nobody seems to know what those mean. <laughs> but this is good, folks. You got to hear this one. Okay. You can park in certain places that you're not familiar with. Right. There's a there's another committee and uh, that I'm on. It's it's just simply there's stuff that's on the shelves that the town has, and we, they pulled them off the off the shelf. One of them is parking. There's a ton of parking in this town. I know a lot of people don't believe it, but we have so much parking. So part of this committee was to bring it awareness to where the parking is. So we had signs made up and the signs were had sponsors on them. Um, and then you'll see green stripes, which means that's all public parking. Anywhere you see a, pub, a, a stripe, you'll see public parking. Uh, but if it's on State Road, like uh, Center Street's a State Road, we can't put green on there. But in the back of buildings, you'll see Town Hall. So that's what they all oh, mean. The and credit union uptown. The, the credit yeah. union uptown. I mean, it's it's everywhere. Again, we have so much parking. It's just spread out everywhere um, down there. And uh, um, with the signs, at least now everything's marked. So if you're coming into downtown and you're going to go to a restaurant, and they're gonna, and our restaurant hopefully will have on their on their uh, um, website where you can park let's say park in lot two or park in lot three or if you call so they know kind of where to park but um it's yeah it was a great thing we did for the town i think it worked out really good and it didn't it, it didn't didn't cost the town anything i think just except uh i think and, and it's a help for everyone uh, it's help for everything you know i think it was a couple of dollars but nothing it was there's it really nothing there's more of the board were you guys thinking of going into a taste of walling for either one of the restaurants have Us? you ever thought about that? We can't. I cannot at Sonic because Sonic doesn't cater. So you can't do anything like that. Uh, my brother was thinking about it, and he was thinking about it for this year, but um, it, it, he's not quite there yet with that, I think. you know. But uh, it's, it's and, and more of those, I think, uh, for a business, it's a little more difficult to get in there. I think, because it, it's booked all the time. Oh, it the, is. Yeah, the taste is. is I mean, I, th I don't know what it is. I think it's like 60, 70 percent book right now. And you have more, more of the churches and the more of the Lions yeah. clubs, you know. So you kind of let them do it instead, you know. Okay, uh, you got anything else to tell us? Any other words of wisdom? <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> I wish I had wisdom. Um, no, but I appreciate you doing this, Tom. So too. With all, all, the, all these shows you're doing, bringing awareness for different businesses, it's, it's, it's great. Well, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Really. That about does episode four tonight for As Tom Tells It. But don't leave, because you got a tip coming up. I'm sure you know where you are until the camera goes. <laughs>